Okay, thank you, class. Thank you for uh, joining for today's session. And we'll be continuing our lecture on uh, introduction of transportation and just give you a little bit brief introduction about what are the future uh, understanding that where the field of transportation planning or transportation systems will go in the future. So uh, as we know that over some time period, there are always an issue of estimation and uh, for forecasting. Uh, and prediction of the future, it's, it's become increasingly, it has become increasingly difficult uh, to predict the future. Uh, primarily because of the evolution, uh, there's a lot of evolution is being done in the technology, in the, maybe in the vehicle industry, motor industry, mechanical engineering. So all of these disciplines are working together in transportation systems and the way of life, how we are going to be commuting has a kind of, uh, uh, to some extent, next five, 10 years, we can have a very good forecasting. But as the time goes on, our uh, uncertainty increases and our predict predictability regarding any systems, it goes down. Uh, of course, we create several scenarios that what could be the uh, pathway in the future in which the technology or this transportation system might go. Uh, but that scenario is uh, also, it is uh, again uh, kind of a guesswork uh, because, uh, especially in case of Pakistan, we don't have enough data which can be extrapolated to understand uh, how much is the demand. Or how much can be the future demand of a transportation system? How much public transportation, uh, public transport should be include? How many people will start using public transport? How many people will uh, prefer to buy their own private cars? So depending upon the socioeconomic characteristics, if we have the enough data of the population and the and their uh, let's say employment or work basis. We might, to some extent, we might formulate a kind of a, uh, give a model in which we can judge that these many cars will come on the road. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough data and we don't have the enough disaggregated data of the population in case in Pakistan. So we are unable to uh, extrapolate and make a very good model. Uh, but they are basically uh, in the, in terms of technology. I'm talking about the technology is being advanced. So, what could be the potential technological advancements uh, in this transport field? So, uh, by technology, there might be a revolution in this fuel technology. What kind of fuel or propulsion or combustion material we are we are using or ut utilizing? So, energy. How and where are we getting it? That is revolutionizing globally and we are like shifting from fossil fuels towards renewable energy sources uh, pri primarily because of the climate change impacts of transportation sector which is admittedly uh, and some can argue that uh, transportation is considered one of the biggest contributor to the carbon emissions in the world so transportation uh, systems is greatly affected by the fuel technologies then comes the vehicle how much our vehicles are becoming are getting more and more energy efficient as well as uh, they can carry more capacity maybe they can uh, they have more uh, this aerodynamics designing which is uh, changing day by day new technologies are coming so maybe the way of designing of vehicles will change and how we are going how we are traveling it for example uh, the concept of hyperloop is coming in which we will be traveling through pipelines in the future as well uh, that by the project by Elon Musk in which uh, I think that it is between Los Angeles and San Francisco if I'm not wrong. So that technology is right there. Uh, so that type of vehicle will change with time. Of course, not so much rapidly as compared to the infrastructures or the fuel technology, but vehicle change is always over time. It has been changing. Next come the infrastructure. So depending upon the demand uh, is the is the um, country or the institution strong enough to provide relevant infrastructural facilities to accommodate the travel demands. So that greatly depends on the type of infrastructure we're going to be needed, needing. 
uh, that will also also like correlate with the type of vehicle and the fuel system we might be using. And lastly, uh, it comes the operations in which that is pre uh, predominantly dependent upon how the management systems evolve, how we are going to be managing things in the future. So these are some kind of a lewd technological advancement that we don't know that in the future where it will go. We can okay speculate, we can kind of a take a make a prediction model for maybe next five to ten years. But after ten years or gradually after some times, the predictability or the accuracy of that models go down. So we need to reevaluate, reperform the analysis again and again, maybe annually, maybe uh, after every two years, three years to keep up to date with the technological advancements in the transportation industry. Any question till now? Sir, okay. uh, my question is regarding previous elements. Yes, yes, yes sir, uh, please. सर uh, आपने बोले है मतलब हम uh, 10 साल बाद uh, जो हम 10 साल के लिए मॉडल बनाते हैं उसको हम रीएवैल्यूएट करते हैं या दोबारा ट्रेन करते हैं फर्दर uh, इयर्स के लिए तो हम इस uh, 10 साल की बजाय हम मतलब लॉन्ग टर्म प्लान क्यों नहीं करते लाइक हम जीआईएस uh, uh, के अंदर वेदर फॉरकास्टिंग करते हैं uh, 30 साल 40 साल 50 साल के लिए सो so, ट्रांसपोर्टेशन में हम लॉन्ग टर्म प्लानिंग क्यों नहीं कर सकते सर ओके थैंक यू सैफुल्ला देखो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रोडिक्शन मॉडलिंग वी आर यूजुअली अप टू सर्टेन लिमिट वी आर वी हैव वी हैव देयर इज ऑलवेज अ एरर ऑफ चांस सो दैट एरर ऑफ चांस इट एक्सपोनेंशियली इंक्रीजेस एज़ द टाइम पासेस ऑन बिकॉज़ द इनपुट वेरिएबल्स इफ देयर द सिस्टम इफ द मॉडल इज नॉट अपडेटेड कंटीन्यूअसली योर मॉडल विल स्टार्ट फेलिंग and regarding you are saying weather forecasting uh, i suggest that is basically those are predominantly scenarios we are thinking that okay the uh, the future the weather might go like this with certain degree change in degree of uh, temperature increase or decrease so that becomes scenarios we for example climate change they make different scenarios of the future so that would be up to some extent for example if you are just open your mobile and you start browsing Uh, your weather uh, weather when when is the weather uh, how much is the weather for the next week okay to th- to next week or after maybe two or three weeks after three weeks the app they don't give you data anymore because they are not reliable that after th- 30 20 days the weather forecast system is not efficient yet to predict that this kind of weather will happen because there is so many unknown variables in the atmosphere that might influence and change the temperature or the wind patterns or the precipitation patterns so similarly the same goes applies to the uh, this uh, transportation models and you're right unless and until we are continuously updating the data or inputting the data your models will fail let's talk about like you are from the gs field if we do if the built up area change your uh, prediction you doing a prediction modeling of land use land cover change and after 5 10 years the pred- prediction modeling if you just make a prediction model to next 30 years and then wait for the 30 years and compare the model then you will notice that your model has failed miserably but yes your land use change models at the beginning at the start they become they are very much uh, uh, representing the right picture on the ground from the ground so short term our prediction models are very good and accurate and as time passes it becomes uh, very difficult uh, because of the limitation of the uh, let's say data as well as the limitation of the model itself or the methodology itself has the this limitations that it cannot predict for a long period of time for that purpose is now we are converting into uh, artificial intelligence as artificial neural networking and then we are talking about fuzzy logic we are talking about uh, machine learning so these uh, if we have enough data inputs then the might uh, our prediction modeling might become better in the future but as of yet in case, i'm talking about in case of pakistan especially uh, all the developing countries we are uh, failing miserably so sefal i hope i answered your question clear sir thank you so much okay. thank you any other question class okay so that was just a uh, point of view from uh, technology uh, now i will like uh, what could be the other uh, Uh, in your opinion i would like to open this 
uh, questions to the class that in your opinion, what are the factors which can affect your transportation or the future of transportation from your own field? Technology was one part. Anyone from your own field, your own discipline, you can have you can take a guess there. I am sure that that will be covered one way or another in this coming slides. Yes, please. What could affect your transportation system? Yes, Rizwan, please. Uh, sir, kindly question repeat. Kar dehne, uh, was cut thi okay, uh, so I'm talking that. Uh, uh, I would like to ask the students now. What are the different factors or variables? Or anything which you think might affect the future of transportation in Pakistan? Yes, uh, you've got uh, everyone understood. Yes, uh, yes, Hamza, please. यस सर मैं तो सिविल इंजीनियर हूँ तो हमारी फील्ड को तो अगर कोई नया क्या कह सकते हैं कंस्ट्रक्शन मटेरियल निकल आए या कोई कंपोजिट निकल आए या फिर कोई कंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्निक आ जाए तो वो ग्रेटली अफेक्ट कर सकती है um climate can also affect transportation systems ke uh, uh, aapki, uh, the more you know aapki, uh, fuel uh, fossil fuel pe dependence like it already has to hamare aur zyada biofuels jo hain wo uh, pakistan mein aa sakte hain ya uh, jaise electric cars abhi tak nahi aayi but hamari government ka plan hai to hamare uh, transportation systems could change according to that Jo, just as a plan. Uh, other than that, um, our uh, uh, urbanization could also affect ke, uh, our modes of transport uh, could change, yes, and the way uh, our transit systems bante, uh, that would also change. Ke humari, uh, maybe let's say Pakistan may in the next 20, 30 years high rises bahut zyada banna shuru ho jati hain. So maybe our transportation systems could also be uh, up in the air. I don't know. Maybe. Yes, yes, you're right. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Salia, please. Oh, sorry, Ahmed, you please. So I, I think economy will uh, play a big role uh, in the future uh, uh, in terms of uh, transportation for Pakistan, sir. Yes, thank you. Yes, economy, very good. Yes, Rida. Uh, <clears throat> sir, according to my opinion, sir, yeah, uh, land use patterns both zada influence karte hai, transportation ko. Ke, <clears throat> for example, sir, aajkal jab wo automotive uh, oriented zada matlab bante hai, ke streets khuli rakte hai, aap log matlab for uh, ke aap log encourage karein logon ko ke wo matlab private gaadiyan rakhein aur baaki to sir matlab uh, hamara jo public transportation system hai, wo bhi मतलब उतना स्ट्रांग नहीं होता और लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस कम्यूटिंग वजह से लोग जो है वो अपना अपनी ही मतलब प्राइवेट व्हीकल्स को प्रेफर करते हैं अह yes. मतलब जो लैंड यूज पैटर्न्स हैं जिस मतलब जिसके अकॉर्डिंग हम लोग रोड नेटवर्क जो हम बनाते हैं आ, वो इस तरह का हो के जो मतलब एक्सेस प्रोवाइड करे पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट इस तो सर ये मतलब अफेक्ट कर सकता है यस प्रोसेसली यू आर राइट यू आर राइट सो लैंड यूज और uh, land use, uh, to some extent, we can map the future, future land cover or built up area. We can estimate, but we cannot estimate or we cannot uh, uh, have uh, predict very uh, accurately that how much your land use will change. And that will, of course, have a very uh, dire implications on the transport, how the, on the future of transportation system. So let me have some uh, your points. Are they covered in this point? So first is policy. Let's talk about the policy systems. How? Uh, yes, uh, someone raised the hand. Uh, do they want to add something? Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, if I'm right, I heard you correct. Uh, you're talking about employment patterns, and uh, that would change. And uh, again, it is very much unpredictable that how people will change their employment. Uh, patterns. So you're right. OK, so let's talk about some policy changes. So how your transportation is. Uh, or the, which type of transportation system is 
promoted by the policies by the government policy what is the government policy regarding certain transportation systems so that and how the government is managing the transportation system so maybe the governance system would also cover how we are currently uh, managing our public transportation systems and that might be one of the reason that transportation uh, system is badly being affected by because of the poor governance of that how much secure is this? Uh, uh, okay, let's if we talk about let's say how much secure is the uh, uh, public transportation system with respect to children? Are the children safe enough to travel transportation systems? Is it child or, child or pedestrian friendly? Uh, uh, for example, how much is uh, gender or women comfortable with traveling in public transportation systems in Pakistan? So that can be kind of a link to another thing. And how much is the government subsidizing certain forms? Or certain fuels or certain technologies, uh, so that kind in, kind of influence your transportation systems. Other is the demographics. Now, how the population growth is happening to some extent, or some uh, we can make a population growth estimation, we can make a forecasting, but we do not know that how much migration will be taken into account. The certain facts, other other factors which will. Uh, change the population growth patterns. So to, to short term, we can make an estimation, but in the long term, it becomes a bit uh, tricky to incorporate so many different variables in uh, transportation, uh, in population growth. Uh, then how many people are aging and how much are they working? What kind of jobs they're doing? Where are they employed? Then the pattern of urbanization. Again, to some extent, like we have told, we talked with Sefula, uh, that built up area to certain extent we can make a very good estimation but after a certain time period it will decline and the accuracy will go down and the changing work patterns uh, i think uh, i am mentioned this energy in the environment so what are the alternatives available to the uh, for this transportation systems and how it is going to be affecting your environment so and the, uh, due to this uh, increasingly uh, addition of climate change uh, uh, mitigation in transportation systems agenda so it has now greatly impacting every type of transportation system being launched or being designed or being or alternative is being provided so everything is no more or less now if you're talking about our environment we are indirectly talking about climate change technology we have talked about it and hamza also mentioned about the materials technology that might change and which might contribute to a designing of a more energy efficient uh transportation uh, infrastructure and this can be kind of a technological advancements and emma rightly pointed out about the economy that economics play a very vital role in determining which pattern or future direction you are going to be choosing for example public transportation the initial cost of public transportation system is very high so governments or developing countries they opt for let's make a new road rather than launch such an expensive public transportation system. Of course, in the long term, that public transportation is more energy efficient, more uh, saving, time saving, and uh, economic, economically more safe in the very long term, like maybe 20, 40, years, 50 years. But for the short term, roads are the cheapest option available to the current governments, and they obviously uh, choose this alternative. That economy is a very vital concern, especially in case of this scenario right now in Pakistan. Okay. Uh, then is your financial mechanism, of course, how much, how you're going to be designing it, how you're going to be funding it, what would be the fares and pricing and taxes on the systems. So these are some of the key, I would say, sectors or dimensions uh, or domains which affect your future transportation design. Uh, I hope I've not missed anything. If If you have anything in your mind, if anything which I've missed, which can be like added in any of the component. So please go ahead. Anyone, if there are any questions or suggestions that, okay, this might contribute towards the transportation system future. Okay. Am I audible, everyone? Uh, Rizwan, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Do, uh, do interrupt me if there is a distortion. Uh, from my end. Okay, so 
then we are talking about this industrial revolutions about how we evolved from a uh, uh, into industrial cities industrial cities because of the steam engine and mechanical engine we jumped from world city concepts to industrial city and then due to mass productions the cities then became regions in which a lot of labor was uh, uh, regional uh, labor was focused on a region in which em they employed for mass production so then we moved on to automation uh, it's called 3.0 the current system in which uh, we are automating many things and we are producing technology which is going beyond their own cross borders. So that is, for, but for now on the robotization is happening, four point, which is called Industrial Revolution 4.0, like version 4.0, and we are now working on towards integrating this cyber, uh, cyberspace, cyber in industry, which will uh, now revolutionize the transportation sector. And that is just a future. Uh, kind of a evolution of the cities and the transportation. So in our terms of automation right now, we are in the automation phase. Uh, like there are some different levels of automation to certain extent. In which level is current mode operated or this automated? So this is a different, for example, based none like in Pakistan, most of all, all manual, everything is manual. Level one driving systems, maybe cruise control that is already available. Uh, yes, Rizwan, please. Yeah, sir, which kind of uh, cyber physical systems like you have? Usse kya hamarad hai? Okay. Sometimes what happens uh, is that you know that we are going to be transferring uh, technologies from one point to another. Okay. So all of everything will be controlled via internet, mechanized robots, artificial intelligence. They will be driving your cars. OK, so how your computer robots or cyberspace is interacting with the current infrastructure or physical infrastructure. Uh, we call it Internet of Things. We call it smart city concepts in which different things are interacting with each other. I'll go into this, uh, this different technologies in the coming slides. So clear is one. Yes. OK, so yes, coming back to the forms of transportation automation, like maybe in uh, we have seen like cruise control is already available in many uh, uh, automatic cars in Pakistan. So you can just that is kind of one way basic level one in which your your automatic uh, uh, you can say uh, automating your cars. Then some partial is like steering acceleration that is now already in this uh, Tesla cars in which your steering and acceleration is controlled by the computer systems. And then we move to level three. Then most of the tasks have been performed by the computer. And uh, then we level four in almost everything and user does not need to take control. And the level five, well, everything is controlled by the uh, by the computer and you, you don't need to provide anything, no input from your side. So that is some different levels of automation. And once we are working towards, gradually we are working towards that. Uh, so I'm just focused on uh, this passenger transportation, but of course, simultaneously all of your this logistics or uh, uh, freight movement uh, is also revolutionizing side by side according to these automation levels so yes uh, we were talk like uh, we were talking and Rizwan pointed out like what kind of technologies would happen like connected vehicle technologies uh, what happened is that uh, uh, anyone if want to explain the uh, concept of smart smart cars? Anyone? What is smart car concept? Yes, this one. Uh, so basically, जितना मुझे पता smart car का concept ये कि आप like अपनी uh, destination उसपे mark कर देते हैं और uh, like with the help of GPS वगैरह सारा system के through वो गाड़ी like हम लोगों को drive नहीं करनी पड़ती like manually जिस हम खुद लेके जिस हम drive करते हैं वो automatically with the help of sensors वगैरह वो खुद ही जा के उधर like destination पे पहुंच जाती है okay very good very good yes sir Fula please सर इसमें एक फैक्टर स्मार्ट कार में हमारे पास यूएसए के अंदर है हम मतलब हमारे पास मैप्स होते हैं ओपन स्ट्रीट एपीआई के थ्रू उसमें डेटाबेस के अंदर हमारे पास हर रोड की स्पीड लिमिट मेंशन होती है उसके अंदर 
सो अकॉर्डिंग टू ए पी आई काम करती है सेंसर वगैरह जिस तरह सर रजवान ने मैंशन किया है सो so, वो डायरेक्ट uh, वेब लिंक के थ्रू कनेक्टेड होती है और उसके थ्रू ही वो अपने डेस्टिनेशन पर मूव करती है तो उसमें जो टिकट्स का यूएसए में कॉन्सेप्ट है वो सारी चीजें भी इंक्लूड होती हैं सर उस फैक्टर के अंदर ओके ग्रेट थैंक यू सैफुल्ला यस सो व्हाट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट दैट कार इज नॉट इंटरैक्टिंग विद योर एनवायरनमेंट एंड मे बी द स्मार्ट सिटी कांसेप्ट यू हैव एक्सप्लेन सो वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट एडवांटेजेस ऑफ स्मार्ट कार इज नॉट ओनली दैट like uh, we are talking about automation uh, we are also talking about the interaction of those cars those smart cars with each other for example uh, you might have seen in when uh, at the junction at the road junction uh, there is a red light and you all stop right and if there is a huge traffic load if a huge traffic is there on that junction and for example you are at the back of the line right before you start accelerating the the red light uh, the red light uh, the your signal was green and it turns to red back like and you just not, you have not even accelerated at that point because of a huge traffic load on the junction so what happened the smart city concept is like all of those cars as soon as the light changes to green all of these cars will accelerate at the same time and when they will accelerate at the same time large number the vehicles will pass within a certain time period for example if there is a, a one like first car will uh, accelerate then the second car will accelerate now these 5 10 second 5 seconds have, are passing for every car which is accelerating after the first one has departed the other car will accelerate after 5 seconds 5 seconds and maybe in the 30 seconds the signal will close ultimately what happens then in smart city on smart city cars all these cars are communicating with each other so all this car will say okay the light is green accelerate everyone so without because if no one will uh, everyone will accelerate at the same time less chance of collision and more cars will pass through the junction and i hope i, I hope i am clear anyone did you understand this uh, uh, sefola yes sir okay great so that smart city will like it will dramatically reduce the congestion on the road so that is the one of the greatest uh, uh, assistance by the connected vehicle technologies that is on ground yes rida please so ye jo intelligence transport system ka hum aajkal kafi matlab padhte hain to sir isme wo matlab kis tarah se relate karta hai wo phir main kya smart car jo hai wo ek component hum keh sakte hain ki uska hai ke sir wo kya hai thoda sa okay okay uh, so uh, you are talking about inter- its intelligent transportation systems its that is the terminology uh, that has been used in the past and it is being used in currently as well but uh, all these different components for example uh, uh, i will be talking about this blockchain and internet of things thing so all of things are collectively working on uh, uh, through the concept of its so it is it has overlaps Uh, for example uh, what is the difference between a uh, sustainable city and a resilient city both or less everything the concept is the same thing the way we are approaching is maybe somewhat different so intelligent transportation systems planners are not involved too much involved in that other than institution from institutions point of view intelligent transportation systems are mostly towards artificial intelligence and how machine learning can be used to increase the efficiency in the road networks of the uh, transportation systems so i would say that that's one of uh, uh, you can say a concept like just like smart city concept and uh, uh, climate si- climate resilient city concept uh, biophilic city concept environmental friendly so these are some different terminologies or concepts out there but yes those are very important as a part of revolutionizing or automating or moving on to the fourth ver- uh, 4.0 uh evolution of transportation okay uh uh rida you got my point yes sir thank you okay okay great uh so aviation systems nowadays more or less every uh, airplanes are now automatically uh, landing you don't need uh, assistance from pilots so high speed rail technologies that is currently being uh, 
uh, again, that a lot of research is being done on high speed rail technologies. And in the uh, it is estimated in Pakistan, at least because we don't have too much rail transportation systems and especially high speed transportation systems. And there is a debate ongoing that we should start some kind of uh, uh, degree or research course on this high speed rail technology. So railway engineering is. Is being I think it's been envisioned in the next 10 years plans of our university as well to introduce railway engineering because that is the one of the future of transportation uh, because in Pakistan because we have to one day move to railway engineering as well. OK, uh, then is uh, fuels and technology system, petroleum, the Internet of Things, how two things will communicate with each other and exchange information. That's called Internet of Things. Advanced analytics and machine learning. So if we have enough machine learning and analytics techniques, that model will be continuously updating depending all the data will be fed into the model and that model will be continually that model would be continually evolving or giving a better outputs or future predictions. Automated vehicles. OK, so more or less these concepts are interlinked with each other, so you might see some overlaps as well. Unmanned aircraft vehicles like maybe you are get your own Amazon package via drones in the future. Uh, autonomous surface ships, maybe in this, all this uh, sea trade will be computerized. You, the people don't have to move on ships anymore. So in the future it is uh, robot inspection, maybe in, uh, will take over on demand services like uh, is, uh, Uber, Kareem services. Innovative concept for protecting pedestrians, power transfers, manufacturing, material sciences, uh, pipeways, big data energy, uh, satellite communications, robotics. Now I think that is agree science item. OK, and blockchain, uh, virtual reality and distribution capacity. So these are some different technologies. Anyone which, uh, who knows what is blockchain? You might have heard about this terminology blockchain. Yes, Alia, please. Uh, sir, crypto may. Yeah. OK. It's crypto. OK, anyone else? OK, so basically it is a system of uh, recording information in such a manner that it will be very impossible to uh, change it or hack it or cheat the system. So that blockchain technology is now being incorporated in the uh, transportation system as well. So of course, one of the example is your cryptocurrencies. So blockchain is the larger part. Uh, sensor technology, materials, nanotechnology, modern ships, uh, isophobic. I don't know what that even means. Isophobic material. So uh, yes, ITS is there, intelligent transportation system, variable technologies, energy and storage. So that will kind of a technologies which are directly involved in shaping your transportation systems. Anything you want to add? Any other technology you might think? OK, any other questions? Uh, I think we, are, we I wind up the topic of future transportation. OK, I'll stop the recording.